Welcome back to the breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go back in history to the year, the year 2013. If you remember the Black Lives Matter hashtag and uh, that uh, uh, quote um, started on this day in 2013. A lot of people may remember it from George Floyd's death, but actually it started way before uh, then. Um, you know, not long before now, there was the killing of a uh, um, uh, little boy. Oh, what was his name now? Uh, uh, can't remember his name now, but George Zimmerman basically was in the picture after the, the murder of... Um, oh, I'm going to find his name anyway. So it was after um, this case and George Zimmerman was acquitted for, you know, the murder of that little boy. Um, that's when the Black Lives Matter um, um, hashtag started. Um, it was from outrage and, of course, people that were saddened after the acquittal of George Zimmerman, who killed um, a black teenager in 2012 in Oakland. Um, it started, uh, you know, from a lady called Alicia Gaza, who posted a message on Facebook on this day, July 13th, saying Black Lives Matter. And of course, that soon became a rallying cry and a movement throughout the United States and around the world. It was also a time uh, to look at some of the people and some of the black Americans who had um, been killed and, you know, had not been given uh, justice or a fair trial after being murdered and being, being racially profiled. The likes of Anton Sterling and Eric Garner and um, yeah, um, um, uh, Philando Castile and a couple of other people. Um, they basically were the ones who the light was shining on at that time. And of course, fast forward a couple of years later, we got to see the George Floyd case uh, eventually take place. Yeah. But it was on this day, you know, that that hashtag started by a lady called Alicia Gaza, who posted it on Facebook. It became a, a national hashtag and, of course, uh, moved even beyond the United States across the world, uh, where people then, of course, started to carry that same hashtag and say that black lives truly do matter. Mm. I don't remember. I don't know why I've forgotten this guy's name. Um, but anyway, that's the story. Okay, so talking about Alicia Gaza, who started this Black Lives Matter movement, I remember watching... Trayvon Martin. Yeah, Trayvon Martin. I remember watching interviews of her and about, you know, how she was motivated to start this Black Lives Matter movement. And yes, it was the um, Judge Floyd case that, you know, basically snowballed the whole movement and made it as big as we know it today. But she explained how she had been motivated to start this Black Lives Matter movement as far back as 2013. And she continued to push the cause for, you know, racial justice, equity, fairness, because she discovered that black people were being killed in the US. And it was just so sad, just for wearing a black hoodie, just for being, just for walking with your hands in your pockets, just for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. And what do you know to be the wrong place at the wrong time? Absolutely black people black. have been killed for just being in a store. People just shoot at them and they claim it's self-defense. So she had started this. And I think, you know, what lessons I would take from this is whatever it is, whatever cause you want to, you, you want to begin, as long as you believe in it, just keep, keep, on, keep on, you know, doing that. I well, mean, 2013. She kept on advocating for the lives of, of, you know, black people, advocating for justice, speaking up for them. And, you know, she didn't give up. And the rest of the world joined her in saying Black Lives Matter when, you know, it became a Judge Floyd that was a victim of, of, of that whole, you know, situation of that, you know, racial injustice in the U.S. So, yes, well, um, good, um, good thing that, that that movement actually kicked off today. Just to quickly mention, I think the, the George Floyd one, you know, is the most recent and maybe the biggest, you know, because that went beyond the United States, you know, across the world. But the Black Lives Matter, you know, as, it, as, a, you know, as a, a quote and, of course, as a hashtag, um, was big, you know, in, in um, Trevor Martin's case. It was big in Anton Sterling's case in... in um, um, uh, Philando Castillo's case. Um, there were riots, you know, as early as 2013 um, and 2014, 2017 also, when some of these people were killed in, the, you know, very, 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 uh, you know, frustrating ways by the United, by, you know, uh, United States police um, or state police in, in the United States. Um, so it, it, I think it had always been, you know, popular, but Judge Floyd's case was the one that put it on a global uh, scale. And of course, that has even you know, move to beyond the United States to even sports and activities now. You realize that in the last long while, before every game is played in football, they take a knee, you know, just to show some level of allegiance with the black community. But shamefully, that really hasn't also changed much with regards to racism. Uh, because after taking the knee, um, after, you know, in England and Italy game, they still got racially abused after the, after mm. the match. Um, the next story um, today in history occurred just last year in 2020. 
And it was a very sad situation because um, for most people who follow TV shows, the Glee, you know, very popular, she's an American actress, Naya Rivera, um, her body was found on this day in 2020. It was after a five-day search. So Naya Rivera and her son had, you know, you know, gone on a, uh, they had rented a boat and they were just, you know, on the river, just trying to have a good time, a quiet time. And she had done FaceTime with her family members. It was a video call. She had spoke with them. And then after a while, you know, when you rent those boats, you rent them for a particular amount of time or a particular period of time, after which you're supposed to return them. So the, the owner of the boat never got his boat back. So he, you know, went looking, went looking for the person who had rented the boat. And he found only the son, the four-year-old son of Naya Rivera. And what happened a couple of hours later was that, you know, this case was reported. You know, people began to look for her. Family members say, oh, we spoke to her just a while ago. Um, after a five-day search, they found her body floating on the surface of the water. And, you know, police investigation found that, you know, she had to use her last strength to get her son back on the boat to safety, to rescue her son, while she sadly, you know, um, couldn't make it. And she, she basically passed. It was a very, very sad moment in time, you know. So um, even a few days ago, July 11th, um, there's been, you know, lots of messages, you know, in the US, her fans, you know, putting messages out on social media saying, oh, it's one year um, when um, Naya Rivera passed and just putting out condolence messages, you know, to her. That's what happened today in history. Um, hot woman, hot woman uh, captions out to her. Yeah, sad story. Um, Big Sean, of course, was one of the people who was mentioned because, you know, they had a relationship. I think uh, probably were even married. I'm not sure now. But they had, you know, they had dated for a while before um, he went back to... Um, his current girlfriend. Um, anyway, um, I was just going to mention, um, 2020 took a lot of, 2020 caused a lot of pain. Aside the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, it was also the year that, you know, the world lost a lot of these very, 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 very um, famous celebrities that were very close to our hearts. You know, it was in 2020 that Naya Rivera uh, passed, Kobe Bryant passed, uh, Chadwick Boseman passed, Dan Foster passed, um, Maradona passed. Um, um, the hero of Ghanaian democracy, um, um, yeah, that, that guy. I'm doing very, very badly with names, remembering names this morning. Anyway, so it was, it was in 2020 that um, a lot of these names passed, you know, and it, it, it was, you know, even if you, a lot of people celebrate and say, oh, maybe yeah, 2020, Rollins, but it was a sad year. Sorry? Jay Rollins. Yes, um, Jay Ro um, J. J. Rollins um, passed also in 2020. So it, it, it generally was a very, very sad year. It took a lot of lives. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, to COVID-19, others, you know, to very, you know, sad, tragic accidents. And of course, including George Floyd, which we just mentioned. Um, and so it, it's a long list of names that we will, you know, never forget that passed in that very, very weird year. But 2021, of course, has taken sound so tan, so really, really sad. Well, we'll take a break here now and uh, we'll return to talk about our first big story about the Emir of Kajuru regaining his freedom. Uh, we'll be right back.